Hey, welcome back to the shop. You might remember when I did the indicator sag video where I showed that indicator stands are quite flexible and prone to deflect when you change their orientation in uh, space. And um, on that topic, um, I was thinking, <laughs> no, I was not thinking. Um, I watched a video from this old Tony where he unpacked and checked a vertex vise that looked almost like a curt vise ripoff. And he noticed that the jaw, the fixed jaw of the vise was tilted in slightly um, towards the moving jaw. And that, that um, made me remember that on high quality vises the fixed jaw is always slightly tilted in because of deflection from the clamping pressure it will get square so you even can measure this and in this short video which yeah <laughs> i might call this series um, machine shop physics 101 or something like that something stupid um, we will go to some of my vices in the shop and see how the fixed jaw and the movable jaw behave when you clamp down with normal pressure or really reef down on it. So we will start with the shaper wise, which is it's nicely made but it's not a very not a very precise wise. We will uh, test a screwless grinding wise and a normal grinding wise with a um, Acme screw. So unfortunately I don't have any more vices or machine vices in the shop that I can test but just as a beginning maybe someone else with a curb wise can jump in and do the same test. Maybe <laughs> yeah maybe that, that would be quite nice to see a difference between a grinding wise and a curb wise or between the shaper wise which is not the best wise and a bridgeport wise or whatever or a hilma hydraulic wise um, i remember all this because during apprenticeship we did a test on a um, it was a hilma hydraulic um, wise with a with uh, 40 kilonewtons of clamping force and um, the, the fixed jaw moved about five hundredths of a millimeter when you clamped down on it. So that's uh, two thousandths of an inch and that's quite significant when you work against a stop and you don't pick up your part with the edge finder. Um, you lose precision so you need to consider that and you need to know it. And when you clamp up tall parts and you really clamp it hard, uh, down hard they won't stand up square, they will be tilted. Okay, we are over at the shaper and this is the original wife that came with the shaper. It has a jaw width of 120 mm and it clamp, can clamp up to about 160 mm. It has nice beefy box ways and it's quite tight. Uh, tight on the, on the guide ways. And here is a lot of meat, but it's um, unsupported on here. So this jaw tends to, when you when you apply pressure to it, it hinges over this area and bends down. And this is quite significant. I can show it to you with an indicator. Um, we will take this surface as a reference. That means we will set our our indicator stand up here and this is a one hundredth of a millimeter indicator and we'll just rest the tip of the indicator up against the fixed jaw and zero out our dial. Okay, you see the indicator touching up against the fixed jaw here we serial it out and now we take a piece of steel and we clamp it in the vise. We clamp it up pretty high because that way we get more leverage against the fixed jaw. 
Um, this effect will be less if we clamp the part down here because the lever against the fixture is shorter. Again, basic, basic physics. Uh, now we take this piece, clamp it, and even when I apply very light pressure, you already see the dial indicator move about about one hundredth of a millimeter. And now when I apply normal pressure, see what happened. Four hundredths of a millimeter. Three hundredths of a millimeter, sorry. And that's not really... And when I really reef down, we jump to six and a half hundredths of a millimeter. And that's significant. That's a half of a tenth of a millimeter. Uh, yeah, that's uh, <laughs> that's blacksmith precision. And to prove my setup, we go down to zero when I loosen the screw. When we clamp down on the part very low in the vise, basically nothing happens except that we push out the whole jaw, you see that uh, that the needle is moving in the other direction. That means it's um, we we bend it out uh, the other direction because we're levering very much, very close to the um, hinge point. And again, goes back to zero or almost. These uh, dial test indicators, of course, have also a um, have uh, an error in them. And uh, by the data sheet of them. If you buy a good one, it comes with a proper test report. Um, these have an, an error of about three thousandths of a millimeter. Now we can take a second dial indicator and see what hap what else happens to such a wise when we clamp down. Let's clamp this very lightly, so it's just not falling out of the vise. Okay, I set up a second dial indicator and this will show how much the movable jaw rises when we clamp down on the part. And we have still this, the, uh, the first dial indicator here that monitors the movement of the jaw. And now if we clamp down, <laughs> there is quite a lot of movement. We get about one tenth of a millimeter of movement on the fixed jaw and the movable jaw also rise by nine hundredths of a millimeter so uh, that's where you, you lose your precision of course you normally you would now take a copper or a plastic hammer and knock down your part back on the parallels and be tight but that's only for parallelism, um, not for squareness, because the fixed jaw is still bent. You have to take this in consideration. If you want to work really precise, you have to work off the table. You have to take an angle plate, a toolmaker's block or one, two, three block and clamp your part against that and set that up. And that gives you the best precision you can get. The wise is always giving you some error. Okay, this is another setup. I have a tall gauge block, 100 millimeter gauge block in here, clamped it in the vise down here, and I have my dial test indicator up against down here, and a meter to dial indicator up against here. And by now we know when we clamp down it will deflect, but um, will both gauges show the same or will it tilt? Let's see. Let's clamp down. The lower one shows 0.15 millimeters and the upper one shows 0.22 millimeters. So the part is tilted that direction pretty much. It's very significant and that comes really into play when you want to square up stock. You have to take that in consideration and you have to know it. Okay, now we're over at the milling machine and we have our 80 millimeter screwless grinding wise. And I have the same setup. I have my workpiece in 
very much up to the top of the jaw. So I have my dial indicator up against the fixed jaw and we're clamping down. Watch the dial. Oh. This one moved a bit less, um, about five hundredths of a millimeter. But um, I'm only using the smaller T handle. What also comes into account when you have a Weiss on the machine, um, the more solid you clamp it to the table, um, the more or less the fixed jaw will move because it will bend on the table of the machine. Okay, so we will check the lift of the movable jaw. And I don't expect to move it very much because of the design of this vise. The screw is coming down at approximately 45 degrees and pulling the jaw, the movable jaw, down on the bed of the vise. So, again, movement of the fixed jaw, movement of the or lift of the uh, movable jaw. There we go. And somebody stripped out the screw of the swice. <laughs> uh, guess who, who that was. Okay, we get about again or five hundredths of a millimeter movement back here, and the movable jaw lifts nothing. That's how I like my wife. The movable jaw is where it belongs, down. Um, so that is one possible error taken out of the equation and uh, that's the reason why I like these Weisses that much. Um, I would love to see exactly this test with Kurt Weiss. I know that the Hilma hydraulic Weisses and uh, other, the, the Schunk hydraulic Weisses also have problems with this. They tend to lift the movable jaw. It's, it is what it is. But of course, this um, movable jaw will tilt out slightly. Okay, I set up again the test to check how much a tall part would be pushed out of square. And again, dial test indicator up against down here, dial indicator up against here. Clamp the part very lightly, zeroed both indicators out, and now we will clamp down. Okay, that's way better than the shaper wise. We have five hundredths of a millimeter down here, and three and a half hundredths of a millimeter up here. So this part only got pushed out of square uh, one and a half hundredths of a millimeter over a distance of sixty millimeters. So this wise is obviously way more precise um, even under clamping pressure than shape of wise and it holds up very very nicely. Um, short word about this wise is a lot of people will tell you that these these are not suitable for milling. We have the same style of wise on our big vertical machining centers at work to yeah we do all kind of um, tool and die work, we do machine parts, uh, everything, and we clamp everything in, in, a, in vices like this. And parts don't get pulled out, even if you use a big uh, 80 or 100 millimeter face mill, or a or a roughing with a, with a 20 millimeter roughing end mill, or with a 25 millimeter inserted end mill. So. Don't believe everything people tell you. Don't believe me. Um, but these wises are very, very nice. And even the import ones are very precise and very nicely made. And you can't get a better wise for the same money. Okay, this is the last style of wise I can test in my shop because I don't have any other. 
Um, this is one of the normal grinding devices with the Acme screw and a movable jar running on box ways. Same setup, dial indicator up here, third piece here, clamp it. And these are not made for heavy machining, really not. Um, they hold way, way, way less, they have way less um, holding force than say one of the vices with the, with the angled screw. So I have uh, an Allen key and the drilled knob here and I will tighten it down. And I bent my L key. Very good. Um, on this vise, the movable jaw, the fixed jaw, also moves about five hundredths of a millimeter. Yeah, not not too surprising. The, the body of the vise is almost the same size and dimensions as the other grinding vise I have. But what will be interesting on this vise is the jaw lift. This vise is not an imp yeah, it is an import, but it's in Japanese, so should be pretty high quality. And I expect some lift from the movable jaw, but not as much as the shaper vise. Okay, there we go. Both indicators set up, and we're going to tighten down. Watch both dial indicators. <coughs> Yeah, I can't, cannot really put down more force on this wise. The movable, uh, the fixed jaw moved again about five hundredths of a millimeter, and the movable jaw lifted about two hundredths of a millimeter, and that's a good amount. That's okay. Um, that's really not bad. And I really cranked down way harder than you would uh, if you used this on a grinder or on the. I used this as a drill press wise. Why? Because I can. Um, I don't like drill press vices at all. Um, and that for I, I prefer smooth ground jaws without a step in them. And that's the reason why I use the grinding vise on the drill press. Okay, last test. Um, squareness deflection on the standard grinding vise. Yeah. Same setup as before, we're just cranking down and look how much difference we get between down here and up here. And I will not crank down as hard as before because I don't want to harm this precision wise. Okay, we get a reflection of Two hundredths of a millimeter down here and one hundredths of a millimeter up here. So also this wise doesn't go very much out of square when you tighten it down because um, the movable jaw and the fixed jaw don't move as much. Especially the moving jaw is, is pretty tight on this one. Uh, if we would if we cranked down as hard as on the screwless wise before, we would get a bit more deflection on this one because the movable jaw would lift and tilt the part. But apart from that, pretty good result for this one. Good enough for the drill press at least. Okay, what can we learn from this experiment? Uh, nothing? Mm, yeah, maybe. At least we saw that machine tooling and accessories and machines themselves are flexible. When you get forces involved in them, they will move, even something as static looking as a vise. The vise will bend, the vise will move, the jaws will lift and the parts will move. Um, everything is made of rubber. <laughs> um, 
you need to know this when you want to work precisely and when you really need to go down to the last bit of precision you can't use the vise. You have to go down on the machine table, clamp it down properly, support the clamping points, use one to three blocks to support it or clamp the part up against it. When you want to machine parts very square you can uh, butt the parts up against a one to three block and clamp that to the machine table. You can, yeah, there are all sorts of ways. You can clamp the part directly to the table and side mill it. Then you get also very square results. Um, yeah, there's a whole lot of things you can do when you when you clamp down with strap clamps on the machine table. You need to support the part directly below the clamp points, otherwise you will bend the part and um, all the features you put in, if you put in holes and until it's clamped they are straight and, re and you release the clamps, it, they will uh, bend in or the tension will release and the, the, the holes won't be parallel anymore. So that's a lot of stuff to consider when doing machining on some kind of precision level. Um, there is a book out there, uh, Funda Foundations of Mechanical Accuracy, from uh, the Moore company that made the chip borers and chip grinders. Also there is a second book, Holds Surfaces and Contours, also by Moore company. And those two books, get them, read them, understand them. You will learn so much about precision, about setup, not even for a chick borer, also on a normal vertical milling machine or on a shaper or whatever, a surface grinder. Um, you will understand better what's happening on a machine. You will learn ways to, to clamp parts properly, to do um, your order of operations, which is also very important when doing machining. When you can't clamp onto a part anymore, it's yeah, that's bad. Uh, and I should stop talking now. <laughs> uh, hope this was interesting. Thank you for watching, and I'll be back.